Okay, we're at the at Castle Coburg, Feste Coburg, Kunstsammlung der Feste Coburg, and they have a very impressive arms collection, not only bladed weapons, but also fine arms. So here's Ingo Petri, um, who is an expert, uh, not only in fencing with sword and shield, but also in um, historical firearms. So Ingo, what is it that we see here? Yes, uh, here we have an arcade booth that is um, a quite old one. It means that it is hafted just with a not with a normal shaft like a gun today or like the leg, later arquebus, but just with a um, stick at the end. Um, the touch hole is on the top of it. That's also quite typical for the earlier ones. Um, the barrel or the whole thing is three staged. You have the barrel the powder chamber and back here you have a um, part for fixing the shaft. Down here you have the hook mm -hmm. that is uh, forged into the barrel. You can see it quite well over here. Here you see where it's forged well to the barrel. The barrel is very very well preserved so that um, if you look along the barrel, you can see the hammer imprints from the smith forging this thing. And here on this facets, on some of them, you can see the um, traces of the uh, shaping of this part. So these are all marks that sh uh, show um that this was all hand forged, yeah? It is all hand forged and it, it also shows that it's very, very well preserved. You also th see that Okay, because these else these marks uh, would not be uh, visible today anymore. They would have rusted away. Okay, I see. And you see that all of these um, edges are still quite sharp. Mm -hmm. So this is... So well defined, yeah. This, they are well defined. It has never been um, exposed to rust. But probably has always been preserved in a um, good environment, for example, in the castle armory. Mm -hmm. Which uh, century um, is it, would that be dated to, and um, how would it work anyway? Is that something that would be mounted on a wall or um, on a. Um, yeah. Is it uh, stationary or would it be something that you actually take into the field? Um, you can take it into the field, but it's more probably something to defend um, a castle, for example. It has not been mounted anywhere. A person can carry it. It's quite heavy. It's um, about 11 to 12 kilogram, but uh, a person can carry it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a muzzle loader, so you have to uh, put the load in here. Mm -hmm. It's the powder and the um, bullet or whatever you shoot with it. Um, then. You, this one can be hooked, for example, behind the wall, okay. so that the recoil doesn't go into the person shooting it, but mm -hmm. uh, into this hook and then into the wall. Mm -hmm. And then you have a piece of glowing iron or a stick with a slow match at the end, and then you have to ignite it here. I will take it in my hand to show mm -hmm. you. So if it's hooked, I, I cannot really take it because the wooden shaft uh, is not so well preserved. But you hook it behind the wall here, and then with a second hand you have to ignite it here, mm -hmm. or you need a second person for the ignition. That okay, is also shown in uh, period manuscripts. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, which century did you say this is? Um, I would say it's uh, 15th century. Okay. Well, of course, the light uh, bolt, uh, the shiny bolt down there, that would be modern. Yeah. Um, so, for a 15th century arquebus, that is a cons um, remarkably well preserved, isn't it? Exactly. So, did you find any uh, traces of any powder or anything? Was it ever no. even used? or? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, it does not look as if it has been used extensively, so it might have been shot, but not often. Um, it also it also still bears traces of um, maybe the original coloring. You see these orange traces over here. 
This is uh, in German Bleimenninger. Mm -hmm. It's a color you often see on these weapons because it's, it's also it's also on the barrel, isn't it? It's it's on the barrel everywhere. You can still see it, mm -hmm. and it's very well for protecting such a barrel against rust. Mm -hmm. Um, so it might be the original color that right. is still preserved. So it also never has been extensively cleaned I from see. the outside. I see. And this uh, Menninger, this um, color is uh, very poisonous, you said, isn't it? It is poisonous today. It uh, is not used anymore. Um, it's from lead. It's, oh, I, I see. don't know how, how you call it in English, lead Menninger maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a poisonous color, but it's uh, one of the best colors for protection against rust, mm -hmm. sadly I see. enough. <laughs> the bore um, is not cylindrical, but it's uh, getting more narrow towards the end. Um, here at the at the muzzle, um, it has about two centimeters, and back here, um, in the area of the touch hole, mm -hmm. it has about um, 1.6 or 1.7 centimeters. Mm -hmm. That is also typical for early firearms um, that the barrels are not cylindrical. Also the touch hole is not cylindrical, that board is quite typical too. Um, mostly they have been not drilled in but uh, forged into mm -hmm. the metal mm -hmm. and this touch hole is at the entrance at a diameter of four millimeters and um, down at the barrel it, uh, there, are, uh, there are only three millimeters remain. I don't know how far the barrel goes down here, often in early firearms, the barrel goes beyond the touch hole. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, somewhere in front of the touch hole, somewhere here, mm -hmm. there is a textile um, um, piece in there. And you know, because you actually I, I uh, shoved the camera into the exactly into the barrel. Yeah, I shoved the um, endoscope camera into the barrel, and so we th saw that there is a piece of textile mm -hmm. and Heiner Grieb. The conservator of the Festa said that many old firearms here they have this um, hempen piece in the barrel that is uh, um, mixed with oil to mm -hmm. protect the barrel and the touch hole from rust. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Very extraordinary piece.